We are not supposed to spend our life living off miracles. But miracles are a testament of God's mercy. Because provided you are human, you will need a miracle one day. Are we together now? You heard the story of the gentleman. Money was deposited in his account. And according to him, for nothing at all that he did, the money disappeared. And he was about to get into trouble. At that point, it may not necessarily be an issue of carelessness. It may not be an issue of negligence. How about a man who leaves his house in the morning and unfortunately, let's say his car develops some problem or maybe he has some accident, someone hits his car. He may not be a making of himself. He was as careful as he could be. But these are realities in life. Miracles are powerful. Miracles demonstrate to the saints that God is alive. Miracles demonstrate that God is still alive and that he is thoughtful and mindful of you. I'm praying for you. May a unique miracle from heaven come as a letter from Jesus to you tonight. For some of you, what God will do in your life will be him saying, I still know your name and I'm still ready to visit you as I said to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How do you tame the joy that is expressed in the life of someone, for instance? Let's say someone who has been diagnosed having some blood condition and it is clear that that person is about to die. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, say for instance, as a sickler in pain and in one moment God visits the person. How do you tame that kind of joy? Or someone who has been trusting God to get a job, it's interrupted his focus. He's not able to go to church because he doesn't even have transport and he's trusting God to bring beauty and color so that he can serve him. I hope you know that the purpose of liberty is to allow you the luxury of serving the Lord without pain. He says, let my people go that they may go and serve me. Every time God brings you out of bondage, he's giving you ample space. He's giving you the resources and the opportunity to concentrate on destiny. There is nothing that distracts destiny like setbacks. Setbacks including poverty, all kinds of problems. My God will give you peace tonight. I say to you again, my God will give you peace tonight. Ah, the Holy Ghost will move tonight as an usher from row to row finding out what is distracting your focus finding what is not allowing you to pray finding out what is not allowing you to fast finding out what is not allowing you to sleep and my God will correct it by his power my God will correct it by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means let me tell you this pain and trouble and despair they have a goal when orchestrated by satan and demon spirits the ultimate goal is to attack your faith he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not that's what he really wants to attack your faith when he attacks your faith, he attacks your joy. When he attacks your joy, he attacks your peace. And he leaves you to die naturally. Because when you lose faith, when you lose joy, when you lose peace, it's over for you. Are we together? Yeah. So how real are miracles? They are as real as every story documented in this Bible. How real are miracles? They are as real and potent as the character of the one who produces them. As real, as secured, as stable, as the character of the one who produces them. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Is that still in your Bible? The same today. I like the fact that he's the same today. The same forever. Jesus Christ, the same. In other words, Jesus Christ, the healer yesterday. He's still the healer today. The lifter yesterday. He's still the lifter today. The blesser yesterday. He's still the blesser today. The rewriter of stories and destinies yesterday. He's still the same today. And he will be the same forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Hmm. Miracles are as real as the character of the God that produces them. He says, I am the Lord and I change it not. I am consistent in my character. Once I have spoken and twice have you heard that power belongeth to the Lord. 
He is all powerful. He is still all powerful. He was El Shaddai yesterday. He is still El Shaddai today. He is El Shaddai forever. You believe that? Say Amen. amen. Second question. And this is the more important question tonight. What does it take to experience the liberating power of God in my life and your life tonight? Seeing that God is still a miracle worker, God is still a proof producer, God still visits men, He still visits men rewriting their stories as He did in scripture, as He's done every day to someone. The greater question tonight is that what does it take to experience the liberating power of God? What does it take to experience victory in your life and my life even tonight? This is why we are gathered. What does it take to experience tonight the power that heals? What does it take to experience the power that delivers? What does it take to experience the power that restores? What does it take to experience the power that can rest upon a man and orchestrate supernatural supplies? I was meditating on this scripture and is, um, I mean on, on, on my notes and a scripture quickened into my spirit. I shouted like a madman, my God shall supply all your needs. I've read that scripture many times, but it just occurred to me that needs are supplied. And it says, my God shall supply all your needs. All your needs. That means God is aware that we have needs and that there is a provision in his economy to supply for all your needs. According to his riches in glory, all your needs, financial needs, all your needs, relational needs, all your needs, ministry needs. I'm praying for someone who believes this scripture that my God, like Paul said, tonight, not tomorrow, not after service, as the service is ongoing, may my God walk around your row, walk around your eyes and supply all your needs in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ what does it take to experience the power that makes greatness out of an ordinary person it is true that God makes great the Bible says it is within his power to make great it is within his power that God can increase a man's greatness and comfort that man on every side. What does it take to experience the power that can provide supernatural direction? It says, thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul. What does it take to experience the power that produces laughter? Sarah laughed and said, all who hear this will laugh with me. You have turned my mourning to dancing, he says. You have turned my sorrow to joy. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, by that same power, he says, we were like them that dream. And they said among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for us. He says, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Whereof we are glad. I'm going to give you very quickly three keys that are responsible for experiencing the liberating power of Jesus. And I tell you, I sense in my heart that as I bring these keys, the power of the Holy Spirit will be resting on people, quickening them, number one, to believe these truths, but number two, releasing results already in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you tonight. You will not need to tell anybody that you are in a strong covenant with God. Your results will speak evidently. 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 You will not have to tell anyone you came to church. God will sign upon your life. He will sign upon your destiny. He will sign upon your family. It will be evidence to men that you love God. It will be evidence to men that you believe in God. You believe that shout Amen. amen. Number one. What is the first key? To experiencing the liberating power of God even tonight. The first key is the hearing of faith. Luke chapter 5 and verse 15. Please be attentive. God is handing to you the keys that control the miracles you seek to receive tonight. Be attentive by the Spirit. And those following online, make sure you are writing. Take notes and listen. 
Don't just wait with prayer requests. No. Take notes and listen. Listen. The Spirit of God is handing to you the keys. They are irrefutable keys that control the administration of the power of God over a man, a family, a business. Doesn't matter what the challenge is. All miracles begin. The working of miracles starts with the hearing of faith. Are we together? The Bible says, but so much the more went out a fame abroad of him and great multitudes, like great multitudes have gathered here tonight. Great multitudes came together, listen, to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. They didn't just come to be healed. It starts with the hearing of faith. It is not every kind of hearing that is called the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. I wrote here that faith to receive comes when you hear certain truths from scripture. The basis for the hearing of faith is that if the information that is communicated is scripture based, then your hearing becomes a hearing that produces faith. There is the hearing of lamentation. There is the hearing of doubt and fear. Are we together? But there is the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith is when you hear a communication that is derived from scripture. It imparts faith to your spirit. The hearing of faith. The faith to receive, even tonight, comes when you hear truths from scripture. For instance, when you hear that God is all powerful, what you are hearing now is consistent with the integrity of the word. So what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. It produces faith within your spirit because it is true that God is all powerful. It says, our Lord God, thou hast created the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is impossible for you. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you hear a preacher speak like this, what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. If you are with me, say amen. amen. When you hear that God desires you to be healed, God desires you to be delivered. God desires you to prosper. God desires you to be great. That is the hearing of faith. Because all of that information is consistent with God's desire. He says, I desire speaking by the Spirit that ye prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. That he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us, how much more with him shall he give us all things to enjoy? God for you. When you hear that God desires your healing, it says, None, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. He sent forth his word, and his word healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. The hearing of faith is the hearing that is consistent with the speakings of scripture. Are we together? Most people hear, but it is not the hearing of faith. They hear the, the hearing of opinions, the hearing of doubts, the hearing of fear. Are we together now? Yes. The hearing of faith is that you must hear which that is consistent, that which is consistent with the word of God, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It says the same was with God in the beginning, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1.16 Speaking about the supremacy of the word. That all things were created by him. All things were created that are in heaven. That are in earth visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers and so on and so forth. It says they were created by him. And they were created for him. The hearing of faith. Now that you are hearing what I'm saying, you are receiving it by in your spirit. Ah, so it is true that this financial situation, God is more interested in it than I am interested in. Listen, when you know this, your, your faith is built. Are we together now? This family calamity, this sickness, this disease is not giving God glory. God is not glorified in it at all. The hearing of faith. It gets you angry, a holy dissatisfaction. 
is planted upon your spirit by reason of what you hear now you'll be ready to receive to release your faith to receive most believers want miracles but they are not even sure what the word of god says concerning their desires hallelujah they looked at jesus one time and said if you are willing i can be made clean and jesus said i'm willing be clean i am willing if it is my willingness you can be sure that i am willing it is God who is at work in us both to will and to do. He plans the desire and he midwives the manifestation both to will and to do. Every godly desire that is put in your spirit, provided it will glorify the Christ, you can be sure that God is behind it. Are we together now? Hmm. Let me ask you an honest question. Do you think you are a better Christian if you are able to pay the school fees of your children and live a life of dignity? Please answer me. Do you think you'll be a better Christian if you are free from all of these medical reports that come to you every week with varying results over your health? Do you think you'll be a better Christian? Do you think you'll be a better Christian when you are healthy and strong and the doctor tells you that you are 50 but your organs look like you are 20? Does that sound like good news to you? Do you think that you will be able to serve God better as he promotes you and gives you capacity to earn more, to live a decent life and to help others to be blessed? Does that look like the blessing of Abraham working in you? Man of God, do you think you will be a more effective man when you walk with the anointing of the Spirit in ever increasing dimensions? That the things that could not happen yesterday through your ministry, now you obtain grace of the Spirit and you are able to wrought mighty things by the Spirit. Will it make you an effective witness? Yes, sir. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Are we together now? Everything that can help you serve God well. If good health will help you serve God well. Open up your heart to embrace it. If peace of mind, serenity of mind will help you serve God well. You can be sure that God will be more than willing to bring it. Because the Bible says, watch this now. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God desires, he desires that as we serve his purposes, we live victorious lives. He is not a wicked God, he is not a wicked father that desires us to indefinitely remain in pain, loss, defeat, retrogression, and then he burdens us with a threat to serve him. That is not the portrait of a kind father. The Bible says, God is love. Shout that after me please. God is love. One more time. When you say a person is love, that means every overflow of the attributes of love should be found in the person. A person who is genuinely loving will most likely be kind. Am I right? A person who is loving will most likely be a giver. The person who is loving will most likely be caring. The person who is loving will most likely be thoughtful with a lot of empathy. The person who has love will most likely be patient, very understanding, very accommodating, very hospitable. So when you say God is love, don't just give a religious understanding. All the attributes that support love must be found in him. Else that scripture would have told a lie. God is love. He gives. God is love. He lifts. God is love. He restores. God is love. He will not watch you crying and ignore you. That is the reason why he's made his spirit, he's made his word, he's made his power available for you to know what he can do for you tonight. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are hearing this, may faith, the faith to receive all that God has in store for you. Whether for your healing, whether for your liberty, let that faith be built in your spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you ignore the hearing of faith... You have shortchanged yourself as far as receiving from God is concerned. It is the reason why Satan hates the word. He hates the ministry of the word. Because as the word comes, understanding comes. With understanding, conviction is built or conviction is strengthened. Listen carefully. Conviction at the instance of the teaching of the word comes or conviction is built. And that is another name for faith. Your conviction plus the grace to take actions that support your conviction. 
God is only committed to perform at the point of your manifesting faith. So key number one, you want to experience the liberating power of God, the restoring power, the healing power of Jesus. It comes through the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. Nothing happening to you today is new. Let me comfort you. There is nothing happening in your life and my life today that is new. Who is listening? You have to believe this. Apostle, my, I have a very unique health concern. I understand your pain, but I submit to you it is not new. And if you think it is new, ask the man Job. If you think it is new, ask the man at Bethesda for 38 years. If you think it is new, ask the woman with the issue of blood. If you think it is new, you go ahead and ask people in the Bible who were plagued with all kinds of infirmities. How about those the Bible says were born with that condition? For most of us, we were not even born with the condition. It just happened as, as, as we sojourned. But there were people who were born with it. And yet God visited them. There is nothing that is new. Let that comfort you tonight. How about financial situations? Refer to Job. A man who lost his estate, lost his finances, lost everything overnight. Worst off, he lost all the people who could help him get back again. They disappeared from his life. Nothing that happens to you now is new. Joblessness, it's always been there. You find a parallel of it in scripture. Delay, retrogression, satanic attacks, curses, bondage. Talk about the nation of Israel in Egypt for 430 years. You know what it means? That some grew and died in Egypt, never knowing that deliverance was a possibility. Yet he told Abraham that after 400 years, that deliverance will come to God's people. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and the thing that will be. There is nothing new under the sun. You know why? Because Satan uses the same men to produce the same thing. And there is only so much we can stretch in terms of our creativity and our ideas. There's only so much. The wickedness of men is defined. There's only so much they can think about. But I'm praying for you. It doesn't matter in what direction Satan has come around your life. The God who did it before in the Bible. Who is the same yesterday, today and forever. May he do it in your life even tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you learning? So key number one that controls experiencing the liberating power of God. Is you must submit yourself to the hearing of faith. Number two. The second key is that you must expect to receive answers from God. You must expect to receive answers from God. Expect to receive answers from God. Even tonight, Proverbs 10, 28. Let's hurry up. The power of expectation. Proverbs 10, 28. The Bible says the hope or the expectation of the righteous shall be gladness. It says, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. When the righteous expect, the Bible says, it is gladness. I think that should be NIV or maybe amplified. That the hope of the righteous is gladness or joy. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Expect to receive answers from God. This is the second key. Let this be a prophetic word for someone. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end to rent issues. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Surely there is an end to shame and reproach. Surely there is an end to crying every night. Surely there is an end to endless court cases. Surely there is an end to begging and borrowing. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. He says, surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. What is expectation? A strong belief that something will happen. A strong belief, a resolve within your heart that something, a desired outcome will happen. What is expectation? A state of strong optimism. A state of strong optimism. I know that I know that I know that I know that I will walk out of this place healed. It's called expectation. Hallelujah. A strong belief that everything God has said will happen in your life. 
Now let me tell you something. Expectation has an attitude. There is an attitude to expectation. Show me two believers. And while the word of God is coming like it is coming right now. For the one you can see that there is an attitude of joy, excitement, enthusiasm. You are too expectant. You, you know you will be disappointed if God does not move over your life. And another is passive, careless, full of doubt. Well, amen. He looks around and sees people lifting their hands and says, Oh, well, let me lift my own hand too. I don't even know what they are doing. You see, expectation has an attitude. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer. And they found a man who had been at Get Beautiful. That he comes here every day, carried to and fro. And he looked at them. And the Bible says that Peter and John, he begged them for arms. Begged them as he would usually do. And then the Bible says in verse 4, Peter and John, Peter fastening his eyes upon him said, look on us. I like verse 5. Let that be a lesson for someone tonight. The Bible says he gave heed to them expecting to receive my only encouragement is that don't expect to receive something you must define your expectation give us this day expecting to receive healing expecting to receive a breakthrough expecting to receive deliverance is someone learning now expecting to receive something from them now do you know that most believers and the lord put this in my spirit yesterday he said most matured believers do not grow because with their expectation they deaden their appetite i mean with their growth they deaden their appetite for expectations and it's true most matured christians stop growing because they stop expecting it's a usual service god has done i know i'm i'm trusting i'm not sick i'm not in pain ah, things are going here and there you see and they don't receive anything again most matured Christians, when he said this, I took out time to table my own expectation and I prayed. I said, I will not be familiar with you. Just because you are using me does not mean I will allow myself to be cheated. When God comes, he blesses whoever is hungry, including the one preaching. The arrogant who is hungry and, and sounds like you are a fool. You know there's a way they can share food in a program and pass you because of your arrogance. You are too proud. You look like, oh, this is not my kind of thing. And they feel that this food is too big for you. Whereas you are hungry. And they pass you and leave you there. Because you have given an attitude that your kind does not need it. They just say, okay, it looks like you like water. You say, yes, water. And you are starving. You are hungry. Whereas you really want food. There are others who don't hide it. As the food is coming, they say, madam, wait, you are passing me. I'm not misbehaving, but I will not allow my portion leave me. That is the kind of hunger. If you are too proud tonight, say, well, you are dying of a diagnosis. And whilst the power of God is coming, people are lifting their hands to receive. You are just watching, well, let's see here and there. My brother, you are the one who is suffering it. The one who wears the hurting shoe is the one who knows where it hurts. And so you must make up your mind. If your word comes, you receive. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, expect to receive something from the Lord. At every level, there is something more God can do. Did you hear what I said? At every level. Some of us here, in all fairness, you have seen the faithfulness of God. And there's not much you are trusting that He does. But if you really are attuned with God's program, there will always be something more you are praying that God does in your life. Either greater grace, greater power, greater fire, greater ability from the spirit are we together there is always something more i'm praying for you what god has not done before may he do it tonight what god has not done before the kind of anointing he's not yet brought to your life the kind of open doors he has not yet brought in spite of the ones he has done before we thank him for yesterday's blessings but i'm praying for you see new things in your life Handle new dimensions in your life. I say it again. See new things in your life. Handle new dimensions in your life. The word of the Lord said, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. We believe that this word that have come through the mouth of God's servant has transformed you and it has set burdens in your heart, creating a um, this mindset of heaven at last 
please if you have not subscribed to our channel do so by subscribing to our channel and we believe that god is set to change your life for good in jesus name and um, if you have not liked the video do so by liking this video comment and share to your loved ones and as you do so god is set to do new things in your life because the word of the lord says that the plan he has for you are of good and not of evil to give you an expected end god bless you hallelujah